siamo? Mi segni. Okay. Buonasera a tutti. Good evening, everyone. Let's give the floor to the press, local press, if they have any questions. Dobrý večer všem. Nejdříve dostanou prostor čeští novináři se svými otázkami. Buonasera. Dobrý večer. Bartolomej Černík, Deník Sport. Chtěl jsem se zeptat, zda vás v prvním zápase Slávia něčím překvapila, protože prvních 30 minut bylo na nejvíc vyrovnané a jestli budete do druhého zápasu vlastně posilnění o nějaké nové vědomosti, které do té odvety použijete. Díky. My question is about the first leg. Were you a little surprised in the opening 30 minutes? It was a fairly even game. Have you learned a lesson from that first leg? We've certainly analyzed the first 30 minutes when it was 11 against 11 and our opponents produced a good performance. So we have worked on that, even though we're not necessarily convinced that tomorrow night's game will be the same sort of match or the same opponents. Část vlastně, kdy se hrálo 11 na 11, podrobně zanalizovali. Vaše, vaše družstvo podalo veliký, velmi dobrý výkon. Já si ovšem nejsem jistý, že zítra ta, ten zápas bude vypadat stejně. Any more questions from the Czech media? No? OK, we'll move on to the Italian journalist, Rocky. Hi, Stefano. Hi. I wanted to ask you, from a footballing perspective, it's been very turbulent 24 hours and the club has already responded to that, but did you want, did you want to say something to the players? Did you need to say something? Did you need to try and soundproof the walls of Milanello and say, guys, don't read anything? No, I didn't need to do anything because from what I've seen, everyone has been very relaxed. We've prepared with a great deal of focus because we know it's an important objective and we know that we want to make it through to the next round of the Europa League. Jaké byly, jaké byly vlastně ty poslední hodiny. Vlastně v posledním dní se událo v Miláně spoustu věcí. Říkal jste svým hráčům, aby například nečetli noviny. Odpověď trenéra, ne, nic jsem jim neříkal. Viděl jsem, že jsou velice klidní a my se soustředíme na zítřejší zápas, abychom postoupili. A question for Tomori, Passerini from Il Corriere della Sera. You've just come back from a long injury. I wanted to know how you feel and what do you think you can contribute to this Milan side defensively, which has been one of the issues this season. What do you think you can offer in these crucial two months which remain of the season? I feel good. I'm pleased to be back out on the pitch. We work day in, day out, and in every match to try and produce good performances and win matches. The same goes for tomorrow. On a personal level, I want to give what I can in the sense that I'm a defender and I try to help out the team from a defensive perspective, just like all of the defenders and all of the team as a whole, in fact. And the same will go for tomorrow, even more so tomorrow, because we know that they have quality, intensity and energy, and the ground tomorrow night will be a, a very fiery atmosphere. So we need to be ready for that. Not only me, but the team as a whole. Thank you. 
protivník s velkou intenzitou a my musíme být připraveni. Já čekám také, že tady bude bouřlivá podpora domácích fanoušků, takže opravdu se na to musíme soustředit. And a question for Stefano. Milan have a two goal cushion from the first leg. Is there the risk of you underestimating this match because you have that two goal lead? And in order to avoid that, what have you said to the players, maybe even out there on the pitch to your team to try and avoid this risk? No, there's no risk of that. We know that we've got a decent lead, but we know that we need to make it through to the next round with another focused, determined quality performance. Because as Fick has just said, our players, uh, the opposition do play with a lot of energy. They're used to getting numbers forward and attacking. And that means that we could actually create and have more space available. Určitě výhoda, že máte dva goly k dobru. Není trošku riziko, že podceníte svého soupeře? Co jste řekl týmu před zápasem? Odpověď, myslím si, že takové riziko neexistuje. Myslím, že máme velice malou výhodu a čeká nás velice kvalitní soutěž, soupeř, takže my se na to velice koncentrujeme. Mají dobrý útok, ale myslím si, že zítra budeme mít trošku více prostoru. Carbone, latte, miele. A question for Fick and one for the gaffer. Fick, you always got a big smile on your face on Sunday again. You had a big smile. Do you think you'll be smiling again two months from now? Because where would you like to see this Milan side at the end of the season? And to the gaffer, I'd like to ask whether analyzing some of your matches, is there a specific performance that you want to see from your team in order to make it through? Which match should they use as inspiration? The lads. Should I go? Yeah, being with the lads out there on the pitch makes me smile after 10 weeks because we have a great squad of players and also because we won the game. So that's always better. But I try to be happy on the pitch. I try and lend the players some support, a helping hand and being back out there after two months is obviously very positive for me. Question for no, there is no specific model match. You can't do copy and paste from another performance. But we do know what sort of display we need to produce tomorrow. This is a team that attacks well, defends well, that is able to make the most of every situation. But we need to make sure that we do all of that in order to beat our opponents. Není žádný zápas klíčový, zítra nás čeká důležitý zápas a my musíme být dobří v útoku, v obraně a musíme podat co nejlepší výkon. Question for Tomori. Defensively, it was crucial for Milan winning the Scudetto. What is missing for you to go back to that crucial defending that saw you in the Scudetto? It's difficult in football to actually point the finger at one thing we need to improve to get better. We want to improve in every area of our play. We know that we've conceded a lot of goals in a few too many matches, and sometimes there are periods in a season where we don't perform as we'd wish to, but we are working day in, day out to get better. And as I was saying, tomorrow night it will be a game where we need to be focused on the way we defend. And we need to try and hurt them when we can, when we're attacking. Myslím si, že je těžké, abychom se soustředili jenom na jednu věc. Každý 
vlastně zápas má to své, my se snažíme zlepšit ty věci, v něčem jsme dobří, ale na všem vlastně jako pracujeme a snažíme se o celkové zlepšení a jak už jsem říkal, zítra to bude pro obranu velice důležitý zápas. Radio Rai. Good evening, Gaffer. Good evening to Tomori. A question for each of you. For Stefan, I wanted to go away from the match and talk about the Club World Cup that's all the rage. Napoli are uh, gutted that they haven't qualified. Uh, Inter already there. Juventus are apparently in pole position. I haven't necessarily understood the parameters, but if we look at the last few seasons, why do Milan not involved in the Club World Cup. You won the Scudetto two seasons ago. You made the Champions League semi-finals last season. You're currently second. Tomori, you got injured at Salernitana, if I'm not mistaken. Ultimately, Milan found Gabbia is doing a very good job. Simon Kier has come back and he's also had Teo Hernandez playing as a centre back. So the defence didn't necessarily miss you, even though you were injured. Quite honestly, I must say that I haven't necessarily looked at the parameters as to how the Club World Cup works, but if we go back to previous years, for a few years Milan weren't involved in European competition and they didn't secure a certain ranking. I think that's why, of course. The aim would be for us to be involved in the Club World Cup because of the tradition and the prestige that Milan have around the world. So we need to be once again involved in the Club World Cup. do této Superligy nějakým způsobem proniknout a otázka zní, proč tam není AC Milan, proč se nemůžete zúčastnit? Trenér odpovídá, víte, já jsem se nedíval na ty parametry, proč tam vlastně nemůžeme být, ale asi to bude ranking, nevím. Určitě tam chceme taky a jako kvalitní klub tam určitě musíme být. I forgot your question. No, after you were missing, the defence changed a great deal because Gabia came back, Kia returned, Teo Hernandez uh, played as a centre-back as well, but the gaffer, who was a defender himself, was able to actually touch upon the defence and make do despite your heavy absentee. Yes, it's true. We've had a number of players that have had to have played at the heart of defence. And that shows me that we have players that want to be involved, that want to help the team out, that have that desire to help out. It's not just two or three players that can play at centre-back. We've got, as you said, Teo Hernandez, who has played a few matches in the middle. Matteo Gabbia has come back. And he's doing very well. We've got Pierre Kalulu and Malik Chow as well. There's me, Simon Kier. <laughs> that means we've got players that want to help the team out. And they're always uh, ready to play. A question for Fick. Do you feel that Milan have to win the Europa League in order to save your season? It's not been great domestically. And do you feel among the favourites to win the Europa League? Yes, 
Of course, at the start of the season, we wanted to win every single match. Of course, we haven't managed to do so. We went out of the Champions League, so we're in the Europa League. We still want to win every single match. And that would mean that we would finish as high as possible in Serie A as we can, and we'd also win the Europa League. And that's our aim, to win every single match, one game at a time. That begins tomorrow with uh, a nice game that we can win, that we want to win, and we're trying to go out and win it. Good evening, Gaffa. We've come to the business end of the season. Do you want a clinical Milan side? What matters now is being clinical and winning matches regardless of how you do so, or do you have to do so with good performances? Tomorrow the result is important. The result is always important. We always believe that playing better than the opposition gives you a greater chance of getting a result, absolutely. How important is it to have Tomori and Kalulu back, the centre-back pairing from the Scudetto, for the rest of the team? With the greatest respect to those that have played elsewhere or so far, can you play a slightly higher line? Can you have these players in 1v1 situations that you want from your team? It's very important. It's very important because, as you underlined, they are aggressive, they're quick. And they're very good at reading 1v1 situations. So, of course, these are important players that we've recovered, just as other players coming back in are important, given how many matches we have. And we hope to go as far as possible, and there will be space for everyone. Two things for Stefano Pioli. Ignazio Abate's under-19 side have made it through to the final four of the UEFA League. It'd be nice to have a uh, UEFA Youth League. It'd be nice to have a, a line on that. And how different is it to match day minus one against Ren? You've won three straight matches. What are the differences in comparisons? And then the Primavera. Yes, we made the most of seeing the final few minutes and the penalty shooter on the way from the airport to here. I'd like to congratulate Ignazio and the lads because it's a very important, prestigious result that once again underlines the excellent work that the entire academy are doing. So congratulations to Ignazio and them. There are a few comparisons to be drawn because I think the teams are a little bit similar, Ren and uh, Slavia Prague. We had an extra goal cushion there against Wren, but because we came up against a very intense opponent with a number of players attacking at pace, we know what to expect. And the fact that we had lost there and here we've won in the league doesn't make a big difference. Uh, all that matters is tomorrow night's game, and we're very focused on that. Před zápasem s Ren prohráli s Monzou, teď jste vyhráli s Empoli, tak jak to vidíš? 
Odpověď na první otázku. Samozřejmě jsme viděli kus toho zápasu a chtěl bych pogratulovat Ignaciovi Abátemu, odvedl skvělou práci. Co se týče analogie Ren a Slávie, tak tam jsme sice měli větší výhodu v Ren, ale myslím, že nás čeká podobná intenzita, útočnost a rychlost. A to, jestli předtím jsme vyhráli nebo prohráli v sérii A, tak to se, myslím, moc nepočítá. Giovanni, Giulia. A question for the gaff. Uh, I wanted to ask you about Milan under 19s, but Carlos Alvarez is ahead of me. After Milan Empoli, you said there was only one selection headache. Now that Milan have almost got a full squad to pick from, how difficult is it to pick a starting 11? And have you already decided tomorrow night starting 11? Yes, I decided it this morning after we had our final training session and I decided the team based on what we want to play tomorrow in terms of the positions that we we'll need for tomorrow night's match. It is difficult, yes, because I've got a number of uh, top players and you have to select from them, but it is easier in some ways because you can know that if plan A doesn't necessarily work, then you've got a high level plan B and that's very important. po zápase s Empoli říkal, že vlastně máš už jenom jednu jedinou pochybnost. Bylo těžké vybrat tu jedenáctku, která bude zítra hrát? Já jsem si to rozhodl už ráno. Myslím si, že jsem se rozhodl na základě nějakých charakteristik, který očekávám od toho zítřejšího zápasu. Myslím si, že je to těžké, protože máme spoustu kvalitních hráčů, ale vlastně zase to tak... Špatné není, protože když nevíde varianta A, tak budu mít vždycky velice kvalitní variantu B. Grazie, buon lavoro a tutti. Thank you very much, everyone.